Hey everybody, so uh, we had a little bit of technical issues today. We were trying something new and it didn't work. So uh, we we have figured out a suitable alter alternative, okay? Um, so I'm going to set up the camera and Anna's got a special song that she's going to start us with, okay? Me over here, son. Oh, all right. Can you guys hear me okay? Great. Had a friend. You guys remember Miss Gertrude? Miss Gertrude, uh, when I asked her uh, how old she was when she had a birthday, she says, I'm plenty nine. So she didn't want to give up her age. But uh, she has been a believer for, for many years uh, and sweet lady, um, was part of our church for quite some time. Uh, now she's living in British Columbia. Uh, and she, uh, she used to say something about Baptist preachers. She says, Baptist preachers never preach on Pentecost. Uh, I want you to know that, that today we're going to spend uh, what is um, the second part of of a sermon called Holy Spirit, No Box Big Enough. Uh, and we're going to look at, at Pentecost. We looked at it last week. We'll look at it again this week. Matter of fact, this is Pentecost Sunday. Uh, this is the Sunday, 50 days after Easter. And what is Pentecost? Pentecost is, is as important as the incarnation of Christ, where Christ uh, uh, left his heavenly home. And, and came down in, in the form of a child, a God with us. It is just as important as the crucifixion, 
just as important as the resurrection. You see, this is how the Holy Spirit infills every believer. This is a significant, significant event in uh, the ministry of the church, in the ministry of God the Holy Spirit. Many people, they, they, uh, they miss the boat so often when it comes to talking about God. They'll say creator as opposed to Yahweh God. They'll say the guy upstairs. Listen, we have a very personal God. Would you want someone to call you human? Hello, human. Hello, being. Hello, uh, the one that is right there. But we, 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 we think it's okay to say things like, oh, the big guy upstairs. This is holy God, Yahweh God. He is Father. He is Son. And my friends, He is Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit is not a force. A Holy Spirit is a, is a person. Do you know the person and the work of the Holy Spirit in your life? I hope that you do. I hope that you've experienced the Holy Spirit. Because if you haven't experienced the Holy Spirit, let me tell you this. If you have not experienced God's Holy Spirit, you have not experienced God. If you have not experienced God's Holy Spirit, you have not experienced God. You see, it is the Holy Spirit that that comes and lives inside of the believer. Every believer has God's Holy Spirit. Now, please hear me on this. Not everyone who claims, everybody say claims. Today we're going to talk about claiming things today, except in a different way. Not everybody who claims that they love God actually love God. My, my hope and, and prayer is that you wouldn't just claim it, but it would be a reality for you. That, that God, the Holy Spirit, would be someone that you would know personally. And you can know. As a matter of fact, without God's Holy Spirit, when we read God's Word, you can't understand it. As a matter of fact, if you've ever said this was foolishness, this this Christian this Christian stuff is foolishness, the, the Bible's foolishness, the things that God teaches people, oh, that's just a bunch of a bunch of fables. If you've ever heard anybody say that, or if you yourself have ever said that, it's because the God, God the Holy Spirit, has not enlightened you, uh, uh, illumined scripture for you, woken you up so that you can understand God's word. God, the Holy Spirit, is the one that opens things up for you and I to understand God. Last week we talked about Peter in, in particular, how Peter was the, the denier of Christ when he was on the cross, do you know him? Hey, didn't I see you with him? Didn't I see you with this Jesus? And three times, even when the little teenage girl comes up and questions Peter, what does he do? He denies. And yet, last week, we, we looked at the sermon, uh, one of, I believe, uh, I don't know, several, 10, 10 or so that, that, uh, that Peter preaches in the, new, in, the, in the book of Acts. And what allowed him to be able to preach boldly the word of God after just, just a few days earlier, a couple months earlier, not being able to even claim that he knew Jesus the one person that he met that changed him, that gave him boldness to preach the good news of Christ to people was who? God the Holy Spirit. If you'll turn with me in your scriptures to Acts chapter 2, uh, I'll need you to actually do that today. Uh, we had some technical issues, so we're not able to put, put those on the screen for you. And those that you, you were your car there you're gonna to have to look for yourself but here it is i'll read this for us acts chapter 2 
we'll look uh, verses 1 through 15. But let's do this right now. Let's pray to God the Holy Spirit. Uh, let's pray that he would give us the ability to understand what's, writ- what's written here. Let's also pray that he'll get this old southern preacher um, out of the way. And he'll preach right through me to your heart, to your situation, to what's going on in your own life. And that this would not just be an, an intellectual conversation or intellectual talk. But this would be the very uh, words of God reaching into your existence, reaching into your heart to, to give you hope and clarity. Let's pray right now. Father God, we thank you for sending Christ, and we thank you for infilling believers with your Holy Spirit. Lord, we, we cry out today, fill us more with your Spirit. Lord, we cry out today and thank you for your spirit. Lord, we cry out today and we say, come Holy Spirit, revive us again. We, we, we cry out to you, God, and we just ask that today as we read your word, study your word, know your word, that you would g- give us understanding of your word. I pray, God, for every woman and man and child that's listening, that today, God, that they would trust you more deeply, love you more completely, Father God, and that um, we would we would be refreshed and renewed by your Holy Spirit today, or maybe corrected. Maybe for some, they would start a relationship with you finally. Father God, today, give us understanding of your word, and we ask this in your name. Amen. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 15 says this. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in new tongues, or speak in other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews devout from every nation under heaven. And all this sound, and at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished. Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Perithians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, for uh, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya, belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. In verse 16, on down to verse 28, is where Peter Uh, preaches from the book of Joel telling about when the Holy Spirit would come. Uh, We'll stop there for our our reading today. But I want us to focus on, just for a second, the very end here, the very tail end of what we just read. You remember the very last part of that where it says, those fellows are drunk. They must be drunk. Do Do you hear them talking? You see, today... Like then, people 
will make fun of God the Holy Spirit. People will make fun of Christians. Uh, unfortunately, that is something that is what Scripture calls blasphemy. Blasphemy. It is the one offense that is the unpardonable sin. If you've ever wondered what the one sin you can do that can't be forgiven, it's the sin of blaspheming the Holy Spirit. It's the sin of denying God the Holy Spirit. It's the sin of of turning away from God. It's making fun. I I have no jokes about hell. I have no jokes about what will happen to those who have denied Christ, who have denied the Father, who have denied the Holy Spirit. It's not funny. I, I love a good joke, like everybody. But my friends, we can't joke there. And as, and as many have joked or scoffed, which, which is just simply a rolling of the eyes or a poofing of the lips to Christians, please understand this. God sees. But here's the good news. If you've ever wondered if you have committed the unpardonable sin of denying God the Holy Spirit, that is a that that in itself is an act to show that God the Holy Spirit's working on you, or maybe even in filling you. You see, if if you have no mind about the Holy Spirit, you don't care about the Holy Spirit, um, you wouldn't be concerned with what the Holy Spirit has to say. So if you're wondering, did I did I did I do the unpardonable sin? Please understand this. God's grace is bigger than your sin. God's grace is bigger than your sin. He will forgive you of all unrighteousness. Now, I'm not trying to scare you today. I'm not trying to scare the hell out of you. But I am trying to present the gospel to you. Stop denying stop denying the Holy Spirit. Today, if you hear his voice, come to him. Now, there were those in that day that heard his voice, and they scoffed. They said, ah, just a bunch of drunks. And Peter says, look, not even those who drink all the time, not even the drunks are drinking right now. Um, it, it wasn't a compliment to be drunk in the Holy Spirit. People will oftentimes um, say, oh, I, I was drunk in the Holy Spirit. That, that wasn't a compliment in its original context. My friends, please understand this. Whenever we try to conjure up, whenever we try to manipulate God, whenever we try to do formulas to have the Holy Spirit work in our lives, little recipes, like if you do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this, then this will happen. Don't try to be formulaic with God the Holy Spirit. The, the title of today's message is very simple. Holy Spirit, no box big enough. There's nothing that you and I can do to uh, prompt the Holy Spirit. We're not trying to entice him. We're not trying to uh, manipulate him. This is God we're talking about. Listen, Holy Spirit does whatever Holy Spirit wants to do. And all of what the Holy Spirit does is right and good. So make sure that we understand this. We need to love God, the Holy Spirit. Let's look now at the first part of this. We looked at the very last part of this. There were some, some interesting things there that happened, weren't there? There were some supernatural things. If, if you're not okay with supernatural, you will not be okay with the supernatural Holy Spirit. Because Holy Spirit is essentially supernatural. Not natural, not like you and I. This is supernatural. So if you're if you're interested only in things that are natural things, 
well, the Holy Spirit might not mean a whole lot to you. But for those of you that are Christians, you know you know the Holy Spirit is important. There are some things that have happened here. First, there was a, a rushing wind, a mighty rushing wind that filled the entire house. They could hear it. They could see it. They could feel it. Do you hear and see and feel God the Holy Spirit? For, for Christians, you know that God the Holy Spirit is extremely vital to your day-to-day walk. Will you pray to him? Will you just sit under his love and care and rebuke as you read God's word, as you pray, as you go about your day? You see, this is not some force like Star Wars that you kind of don't know. It's just kind of out there. This is God, the Holy Spirit, the very person of the Holy Spirit. And he comes and takes up residence inside the believer. Isn't that wonderful? That he comes and lives inside the believer to help you. There's an old skit. Remember skits that they used to do in churches? That's how I actually met Cinnamon. Was I was at a, uh, hey brother, how's it going? Anytime, you're welcome. Bring your family, all right? Um, it was a time that um, I, I met Cinnamon. I was in a drama group, a church drama group. It was called Theos Logos, the Word of God. And that was the name of the drama group. We do little skits. We go to little churches and do little skits. And Cinnamon was in the uh, singing group at our little university ministry. And hers was called Wholehearted. And I saw this beautiful woman singing beautifully. I, I was, my eyes were locked on her. Uh, she saw me acting like a, uh, like a, a little bit like a fool probably, uh, trying to do skits and entertain people. But there was this one skit that we did. And you can think back, to maybe you've seen a skit like this. And uh, it still sticks with me to this day. It's, it's this skit of this kid going about his day, pretending like he's a Christian, pretending like he's doing the things that he's supposed to be doing as a Christian. But when it gets uncomfortable uh, and when he is tempted, he gives in to temptation and he eventually um, denies uh, the Holy Spirit, and uh, I'm not doing a very good job of telling about this this event. But 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 the idea is there. As Christians, we take we take the Holy Spirit into places that we shouldn't take Him, because He infills us as Christians, and then we go to places that we shouldn't be. Not that we shouldn't be light in the midst of darkness. Not, I'm not talking about that. But what we oftentimes find is we as Christians will go places and do things not to be a ministry and a light to others, but to have the other people's darkness um, corrode us. Uh, make us to where things aren't like we need them in our lives. God the Holy Spirit needs to be the one that we honor as God. If you can't take your pastor with you to the places you're going and the th- and and you can't tell your pastor the things that you're doing, then the good idea here is that maybe you shouldn't be taking the Holy Spirit there in a greater degree. Make sure that you're doing things that you're living a holy life. So the first thing we see here is that there was a mighty rushing wind. Then we see that there were divided tongues and that the that there was literally tongues that would come on top of of these 120 uh, followers of Christ. And these these tongues 
uh, would help the people speak in other languages. Although these people were Galileans, and there was actually a lot of uh, jokes made about Galileans and how they dropped off syllables and didn't speak proper. Uh, and so to have uh, essentially a redneck Galilean speak the very words from all over this, this known world at the time was, again, a supernatural event. It was a bit of a shocker for everybody. That's why they said, aren't these Galileans? So that was another part of the event. Now, just as um, the incarnation, we can't recreate that. And just as the resurrection and crucifixion, we can't re recreate that. We need to be very cautious in trying to recreate what has happened here in Acts chapter 2. I'm not denying that the Holy Spirit still works and, and gifts that were given to the church, but not everyone who claims that they have a gift of the Holy Spirit actually is doing what the Holy Spirit wants them to do. Just like not every preacher is preaching the gospel that needs to be preached. Let's look a little bit further. Not only was there a wind, a mighty wind, and not only were there tongues of fire, but there were also people that were able to have boldness preached to them. or they, they had boldness in being able to be preachers of the gospel. And that's, that's so that the gospel could be gone out to all the world. Uh, and today, we're, we're good representatives of, of what has happened through God the Holy Spirit, that he has actually shown up in Fort McMurray, uh, Joe Jesperson in the 70s, uh, along with Cliff and a few other people, were able to start this church. And, and that was a, a ministry of God the Holy Spirit. In his, in his global reaching out of, of every nation and every tribe and every place, uh, going to where, uh, or hearing the gospel and receiving the gospel and believers uh, becoming, or people becoming followers of Christ. And that's one of the things that is a beautiful ministry of the Holy Spirit, that he is a, a missionary God, that that. Uh, we, we talk a lot about the importance of missionaries. Do you know the biggest missionary is God the Holy Spirit? Because God the Holy Spirit goes everywhere. God the Holy Spirit touches anyone who he, who he wants to touch. And God the Holy Spirit right now is in places doing things that no one could even imagine. And where, where people will say, oh, you can't go to that community. That's a closed-off community to Christians. They don't like Christians there. You know what God the Holy Spirit's doing? He's, he's giving men and women and children dreams about Jesus. That's why in the Muslim world, you'll see men and women wake up and they'll go, I need to worship Jesus. I had a dream that Jesus wants me to worship him. That's what happened to, to many in the Muslim world. Uh, and that, that happens to, to many that are, that are very spiritual people, but not spiritual in the sense of Christ following spirituality, Holy Spirit spirituality, Bible-believing uh, teaching of God the Holy Spirit. There are many that are all over the world that are very spiritual that, that feel like something's missing, and God the Holy Spirit in many ways reveals himself to them. And even in your own life, You've experienced this, haven't you? Where someone has said something to you at just the right moment, in just the right way, and you knew that it was God the Holy Spirit, not some coincidence, but it was God the Holy Spirit getting down to you. Or maybe it was an experience that you had that you couldn't deny it, you couldn't call it coincidence or just a weird sequence of events, but that you really knew, listen, God the Holy Spirit got through to my thick skull, my, my stubborn skull. And that's what God the Holy Spirit can do. He is a missionary God. Now, does he use missionaries? Yes, he does. Uh, that's, that's the whole book of Acts. It's the, the sending God 
who sent missionaries like Peter and John and Paul and the rest of the apostles to start churches and to pastor churches and to be a part of churches and to be in communities where they would be at job sites and tell about how good God is. That's what you can do as well. You can be filled with God's Holy Spirit and you can go to your job and you can be Jesus at Sin Crude. You can be Jesus in your home and Jesus to your family. You can present what a Holy Spirit filled person is to those that are in your your circle of influence. You can show them what, what a Christian is by the things that have happened in your life. You can tell them how good God is. Thanks so much for coming out today. I'm glad that you did. And uh, we'll continue on tonight at 6.30. Thank you, Clay and Anna and Ivy, for uh, playing and singing today. And for Clay, for your work today as well. I um, hope everybody has a great long weekend. If uh, there is something that uh, you need prayer about, please let us know what that might be. And we want to join you in prayer. And as well, if, uh, if you need anything, please let us know. Let's, let's pray. Father God, we come before you. We thank you for your, your Holy Spirit. We thank you that your Holy Spirit still speaks to us, that your Holy Spirit still works in us. God, we thank you that your Holy Spirit gives us understanding of your word. Thank you for all the men, the women, and the children that have come out today, either online or in person. And we pray, God, that you would uh, help us to grow closer to you, Father. Thank you for this time. We ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Take care, everybody.